What's up you guys, Joe Dobby here. I am now a Deck Out Gaming affiliate. Use Joe Dobbs Deck Out at checkout. Deck Out Gaming has tons of singles for Pokemon, Dragon Ball Super, and Digimon TCG, as well as One Piece. They now buy list as well, so don't hesitate to reach out and uh, they got your back. Really high customer service ratings. Thank you guys. And uh, yeah, let's get to the video. What's up, YouTube? This is Joe Dobby, your Digimon TCG purple deck creator. This is not a purple deck, but um, I just wanted to let you guys know of this deck because I have a lot of close friends or some close friends that have experienced um, their frustration facing Beelzemon X antibody. Um, and I know that this is circling around Facebook groups <laughs> where people are like, we need a floodgate that prevents trash from deck. You know what I mean? And I'm like, I don't think that is the issue with the deck. I think with Beelzemon, the issue of the deck is just Beelzemon X antibody. The rest of the deck I think is fine. Um, if Beelzemon X antibody did, had, had a more nerfed or more, uh, difficult, um, effect to pull off, um, for lack of a better term, then maybe people would experience less frustration with it. But I think its speed is where it needs to be to even be remotely competitive. And this is someone who has used Beelzemon, um, since release EX2. Every format I beat, I, I've built Beelzemon and it has never been this fast, which is why it has never been able to compete, period. Which is why I'm getting mine now that he's out in full power and I'm going to do my best to get mine. Um, I'm just too busy to go on Twitch and do uh, a lot of regional events currently. But, you know, in the event that I do, um, you guys can follow me on Twitch. It's just Joe Dobby. But that said, um, another hesitation that people have is, oh my goodness, like we're back to a three deck meta. You know, it's Hunters, uh, it's Hunters, Beelzebub on X and, and whatever, right? And Cross or whatever. Um, I want to say that that's not necessarily the case. I found this list in Japan and I know Japan meta, best of one, whatever. Um, and I was wondering what made this deck special in BT12. And honestly, there's a lot of things that make this deck special, particularly if your meta or our meta becomes Beelzebub and Cross. Um, there's a lot of things here that actually lead to a successful uh, victory. There's a lot of workaround. There's a lot of ways to stave off your opponent or prevent your opponent from attacking um, early on. And I think that is very, very good. So what I'm going to do is kind of do a profile. Um, I adjusted the deck a little bit um, to account for speed. And um, that's one of the big things that we need in, in the current meta, right? Getting to what you need immediately. And I think while I don't have memory boosts, which I'll show you what to sub in, um, I think this deck does have enough to get there. So we'll dive right into it now. All right, you guys, so diving into this now, we're gonna start with the eggs here. Um, just the one copy of Sumamon, which gives a 2k DP boost on your turn, and four copies of Sumemon when attacking that, um, if it's got unidentified in its type, you can draw one. So from level three onwards, you're able to trigger draw one. So you'll be able to find a lot of cool things. Even if you aren't seeing your level fours, you'll be able to get that extra draw, which I think is very crucial in the deck. So um, you'll see those pieces. For rookies, we've got Karamon here, um, just the BT2 rare. Uh, once again, if you play another Digimon of the same name, you can trigger draw one. And there's a Kurosarimon here that's actually just a four cost. So if you've got a Kurosarimon over this Karamon, you can hard play a Kurosarimon that is a blocker um, and also get the advantage. So the blocker Kurosarimon I've subbed out for Mechanorimon, um, which you'll see later, but you can totally sub that back. The only reason why I prefer Mechanorimon is for instances where um, you've got a higher DP threshold at 6k, so like you can stop Wizardmon X from swinging and getting the extra trash through its inheritables um, and a bunch of other stuff. So I like the 6k over the 5k Kurosari here. Next, we've got four copies of Karamon. This is your main searcher in the deck, um, so very important card. Um, on play, you can reveal the five top five cards of your deck and you can add a tamer and an unidentified. So you can grab basically any missing piece that you have that's not in your hand and Arata, which is very, very big in the deck. Arata is your main kind of like momentum builder and you're gonna need Aratas for sure. Uh, next, you've got here uh, the EX1 Karamon. Um, hear me out. 
this deck is blocker heavy and is focused on Quartzmon. So um, Karamon is going to provide your Diaboromon with a high enough DP, all your tokens, um, well, this stack mainly, um, will be relying on all your tokens to get uh, an extra DP. So the more tokens you have, the higher DP you've got on your turn. Um, so very good for being able to uh, swing over things um, after you've blocked with one of your tokens, which is kind of like a very good um, return to sender <laughs> kind of play. Uh, yeah. Um, another sub out for this is the promo Karamon, which on your opponent's turn gets an extra 1k DP boost. Um, I think that is also very good if you'd rather play on the defensive. This is like one of my very few offensive tools, this Karamon right here. So next we're going to go into the BT2 Kurosarimon, which is actually a very, very good card in the deck because it allows you to continuously build upon your plays. Um, the idea is to just build a huge wall and kind of just win the game from there. So when you play another Digimon with the same name as this Digimon, gain a memory. So um, you can do like Diaboromon into token Diaboromons and then gain memory for each one, um, potentially keeping turn and um, just being very successful on that end. Uh, next, we are running um, the two copies of Mechanorimon, as I've said. This blocks a lot of early attacks that Crossheart um, or Hunters will potentially do to kind of get them to save. Um, and Impmons. So this will stop a lot of Impmons. I know Beelzemon X players are running the Rushy style deck, which is why I kind of opted away from that because I know people will start to catch on and start playing um, blockers or running blocker inheritables, and I just don't want to deal with that. So my build is totally different, but as someone who does play Beals X or Beelzemon as a like basically like career move for Digimon, um, Mechanorimon is a huge counter um, early because you want to keep yourself at the as much security as possible, quite frankly. Kurosarimon here, this one is really good. I like this promo um, because basically all turns, all of your other Digimon with the same name as this Digimon game, Decoy Black White. When a, one of your other black or white Digimon would be deleted, you may delete this Digimon to prevent that deletion. So um, all of your other Digimon gain decoy, which means your tokens will gain decoy, which means um, you can do a lot of stuff like protect your main stack that gives all of your Diaboromon blocker, so you can just last so much longer until you're ready to swing for game. In addition to that, um, to my knowledge, a judge can correct me here, if for example a Death X was dropped, um, if you've got Digimon with Decoy, uh, I think half of your Diaboromon will die. Because for every one Diaboromon that is targeted to be deleted, one Diaboromon will decoy in its stead. Um, that's my knowledge. Uh, so it doesn't even delete all your Dias, which is very good. Next, we've got Infermon here. When this Digimon digivolves into Diaboromon, you can reduce the memory cost of the Digivolution by one. Once again, this is a speed tool, right? With the Kurosarimon and this Infermon, you're reducing, so you can potentially go into Diaboromon for two. And then uh, once you get into Diaboromon, depending on how many Aradas um, you have, you can play a bunch of Diaboros tokens, and then the Kurosari will gain you memory off that. So it feels Beelzemon-esque in, in like the Ayan Mako style of uh, memory gains. Uh, four copies of Infermon. This one is a very important Infermon in my opinion, and the reason why is because um, on deletion inheritable it cycles a token back, which is very good. But the fact that, the fact that you can go into a Karamon into an Infermon for four cost is absolutely huge in my opinion. Um, like if your opponent happens to set you to two or three because they're trying to do a a uh, memory tamer, which is basically like a non move, it sets you up for the future obviously. But a memory tamer at the point where your Karamon goes into Infermon means that they have to deal with Infermon and they likely don't have that ability unless they have a level four in um, their raising or they're willing to delete it immediately and give you um, a good amount of memory. So I really like this a lot because if they don't deal with it, it's an immediate bridge to Diabormon. And lastly, we are running just um, one copy of the EX, uh, the EX1 Infermon. Um, during your opponent's turn, when an opponent's Digimon digivolves into a level 5 or higher Digimon, um, you can gain a memory. So this is really good uh, because you can 
make your opponent force your opponent to pass turn um which means that you know if 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 they are doing the thing where they're like the digivolving and deleting something you can at least counter by forcing them to end their turn Next is the BT5 Diabormon, which is actually a very powerful Diabormon. When Digivolving, you may play one Diabormon token without pay paying its memory cost. Um, and in addition to that, it stacks with Arata. So like, you know, it doesn't stack with Arata, but it works well with Arata because it can play a token and then your Aratas will play more tokens, um, which is kind of nice. So then you just have that one extra token to potentially block or, or be, be a decoy target, etc. Um, next is the EX1 Dia, and this one is super powerful. This is the main Dia Bormon that you want to get into, followed by the second one, just to perpetuate the amount of blockers that you have and, and kind of like just have a huge wall. Um, security at the end of battle, you may play one Dia Bormon token without paying its memory costs. Dia Bormon tokens are level 6, blah 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 blah. Um, opponents turn, all of your Dia Bormon gain blocker, which is really huge because, you know, if you can stave off your opponent once again with Mechanorimon and get into this guy and you've got a couple of Radas out, then you're going to have like four or five blockers. And then it's like, what does Beelzemon do at that point? How do I deal with that board, right? Um, because Beelzemon, for example, will only really have Deathslinger, Rivals Barrage, and those are all single target. Um, Terror Cluster is a single target. There's nothing that really deletes multiple things in one go for Beels, um, unless you're like, putting a bunch of blast modes at the top of your deck and, and doing all that but then because all your tokens are level six you would actually need 30 cards in trash in addition to all that to even delete a single diaboramon per uh single target move so um i think once you get into this you're going to be in a really good spot especially if your opponent hasn't chipped into your security yet which is why mechanorimon's a really good deck or a really good card to have excuse me um, and with combination of all the inheritables, you're just setting yourself up for even more success. Once you've got two of these Diabormon on the board, which can be done because of that infer that warps from Kara, um, it's very difficult to work around that, in my opinion. Once you've had that, that's kind of like GG, well played, you know, you're kind of just waiting until you're wide enough to swing for all the checks and win the game. And three copies of Quartzmon. So Quartzmon can digivolve over white Digimon that are level six for six cost. Um, Quartzmon is way better than Armageddon and Quartzmon is absolutely huge. Um, the biggest combo that I can let you guys know here is you build, you establish that wide board and you don't even need to ever unsuspend your Diabormon when you're ready to go for game. When you're ready to go for game, if you've got the memory, you just Digivolve into Quartzmon, suspend all of your Digimon and Tamers, then for every um, suspended Digimon and Tamer, gain one memory so um you know if you've got for every diaboramon token for every tamer and for every digimon and tamer that's on your opponent's board you are gaining a memory so this quartz monk can potentially be free isn't that awesome um and all turns all other digimon and tamers don't unsuspend which means that in the event that Quartzmon cannot go for lethal here then you just chill pretty much <laughs> um anyways when attacking suspend one of your opponent's digimon and tamers and then trash the top card of your opponent's security stack for every five suspended digimon and tamers so let's examine a very realistic board state right you've got diaboramon blocker three diaboramon tokens so that's four and maybe let's just just say you have a caramon or whatever so that's five digimon um on the board and let's say you've got like two erratas one izzy so that's eight things right this means that your opponent would only need to have two things on their board suspended for you to trash um two cards from the top of their security stack when you attack with quartzmon which means that if you've chipped enough to get your opponent down to two security and they don't have a blocker when you digivolve into quartzmon you win the game because you would digivolve if you can keep turn with all that, and you will, because five bodies and two tamers is enough to gain all your memory back pretty much. Um, you swing, trash top two, and that's that's a swing for game, right? Um, which, is, which is huge. So that's how you can win the game, but it's not the only way to win the game. You can totally win the game by just building a bunch of Diaboramon blockers. And then when your opponent is kind of like locked down, just swing, just swing right um now you're probably wondering what how does metal garumon x like metal garumon x is a card jodabi like how do we deal with that 
Um, you have option cards that will deal with it, like Catastrophe Cannon. Um, and you just keep the Mechanori on board. Keep it on the board, you know? Keep something on the board that isn't a Diaboromon so all of them don't get bounced to your hand. Simple as, right? Um, it's, it's, a, it's a solvable workaround. We know when a Metal, Metal Garumon X is gonna get into Metal Garumon X, so you just play around it for that turn and, and resolve it that way, right? So there you go. Um, but yeah, Quartzmon, super sick. Uh, doesn't even, like one thing you can do too is if you got those tamers and all that, or sorry, not tamers, but tokens. If you have enough tokens to still keep turn with Quartz, then I would say you swing with the tokens, right? Because the tokens get DP as well in this deck. Um, unless I'm running the wrong card, I think. I think I'm running the wrong level three or level four, but um, you can switch that up to have your Diaboromon tokens get increased DP as well. Swing, and if those survive, they're already suspended, right? And you've already chipped for game with Quartz and win the game that way. Two copies of Izzy, just so you can kind of see what you're gonna draw into, see what you're gonna prepare for. Um, and also memory tamer is huge because it means you only need three memory basically with quartz at this point um, to get in a quartz and swing for game which is huge uh, errata uh, start of your turn as well is huge memory gains um, so it's just more value over time um, when your opponent digivolves into Diabormon, you may suspend this tamer to play one Diabormon token without paying its memory cost so the sequencing here is pretty much like you go into Diaboromon over, um, you know, you go into Diaboromon, you suspend all your erratas to play as many tokens as you can, um, and then you go into Quartzmon and suspend everything that you played, right? Um, and then once you've done that, uh, you're kind of just straight out of luck for your opponent's side, right? They just have to deal with the Quartzmon swinging, with everything, on, with everything suspended. Um, oh, and they won't even have a blocker, because, you know, when Digivolving, suspend so um they're pretty good to go so there you go <laughs> um and lastly four copies of catastrophe cannon sometimes this could set you up for game as well because you get to play a token or a diaboromon token if you have a diaboromon in play um so sometimes you know depending on how deep you are into your deck how many catastrophe cannons you've seen you can be like okay swing for it and then hit catastrophe cannon the digivolve two and then if you've got a diaboromon out which you will likely have a token out um you can play another token which is huge um so that's the deck. Uh, substitutions, I would play around with the different Karamons that are available and the different Kurosarimons that are available. Um, in addition to that, uh, Catastrophe Cannon, you can probably bring this down to like two to play Iron Fist Onslaught or play um, Ultimate Flare. But um, other than that, you guys, uh, the deck seems insane. It just needs the speed. And honestly, just like every other stack deck, you just need decent variance. <laughs> <laughs> um, once you've got that, you're pretty much on your way. Um, but yeah, that is the deck profile, you guys. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, whether you want to play this deck, whether you want to dust off the old Diaboromon and, and throw quick three Quartzmon in there and, and, uh, and run the hands and see if you got it. Um, let me know what changes you've made. And if you like the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching and peace.